Hi, my name is Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to respond vlogging style to a couple of comments about Boris Johnson's U-turn on free school meals that appeared on the channel. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So very briefly, as it's the first of these sorts of videos, I um, each Monday do something called the Political Postbox where I grab some of the most engaged with comments on the channel and throw my own thoughts onto them. What I'm thinking is because there's quite a range of them and maybe it'd be better to just do a single video on a particular comment on a particular theme at least. So I'm thinking of not so much doing the political post box each Monday and maybe at the moment every few days but maybe even every day if people think this is a good idea because I get a lot of comments now. Um, too many to actually read if we're honest, we're at thousands a day. But maybe where it does provoke a bit of interest doing a video specifically on it. So let me know how you think this works. But what this one is, is on the free school meals U-turn from Boris Johnson. There's a couple of very interesting comments which I would like to come back on. The first one um, from what looks like a Boris Johnson supporter. And I would encourage people who have counter views to my own to put in questions or statements but I will have to just point this out. If you write exclusively in block capitals, you are, that is, that is, you know, in terms of the online etiquette, you are attempting to be rude. So I won't read that. But if you, you know, you write a statement. So someone's saying here, I will also point out as well, I may make the odd correction to someone's things, but if it's beyond hope, then it's just as it is. So this is copied exactly as it is. Um, he made a U-turn. He should be commended for doing that rather than being criticised. He could easily have ignored the Rashford please. Give credit where credit is due. So, um, three points there. The first is he made a U-turn and should be commended, not criticised. I didn't actually criticise Boris Johnson for making the U-turn. At no point in my video did I criticise that. What I did criticise was the fact that he didn't make the decision much earlier on. That's what I criticised, and that alone. The fact that he did not, even when it was quite clear that public mood was not on his side. I didn't even criticise from a moral point of view. Could easily have done that. I mean, that's easy for someone like me to criticise uh, a politician on the opposite side of the political divide on purely moral grounds. We can do that all day. I don't mess about with such ridiculous subjective arguments. I'll criticise something more objective. Um, now, if you're talking about people in general and not me criticising him for making a U-turn, the only people criticising him for making a U-turn are ironically the people who are also on the right wing of politics. Those are the only people. Even Keir Starmer, the leader of the Labour Party in PMQs after the event, said that he commended the Prime Minister for the decision. He said it was the right decision to make. So... I am not aware of any of Boris Johnson's traditional political opponents, including myself, that has criticised him for the U-turn. We're all delighted that, do you know what, over a million children are not going to go hungry this summer. Assuming he follows through on this promise. So then the second point says he could easily have ignored Rashford plea, I assume it meant. Um, no, he couldn't. Let us be absolutely clear on this. The reason for Boris Johnson's U-turn is not because of Marcus Rashford's campaign directly. That is not to say it was not instrumental. It was absolutely crucial. But Boris Johnson himself tried to say that he not, was not even aware of the Marcus Rashford campaign. Now, that turned out to be a lie. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Uh, because I think only the day before he'd commented on it and then the next day he said he'd lied about it. But I'm going to come on to that. That's, that's a, an interesting topic potentially for a later on video. But here was the political reality. So Boris Johnson was asked by the opposition, can we not extend this scheme? Other parts of the UK seem to be, why can we not in England? And he said, no, 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 no. Then public opinion swung behind the idea of extending it over summer, quite clearly. He still ignored it then. Even on the day of the U-turn, so it was not considered over a great period of time, on the day of the U-turn itself, cabinet ministers were defending the decision not to do it on that very day. So the decision was very, very quick fire. 
Um, what had actually happened was that Labour would have put forward a motion in Parliament to provide the funding for it. Remember, the government is not the supreme power in the UK. Parliament is sovereign in the UK. Now, when a government has a large majority, Parliament can be bypassed quite easily. Um, but there are limits. It only takes a few dozen Conservative MPs to support a Labour motion calling for this scheme to be funded and the government would have to comply. They get no say in the matter. Parliament will have spoken. That would be disastrous. Boris Johnson could not allow that. Now, when you say credit where credit is due, I could not agree more. <clears throat> and here is one thing. So, I talked about this, uh, it's not my third video really where I'm talking about this, but in, in, on Sunday, actually on Sunday I recorded, I think it was Monday it came out, I was describing a letter I sent to my MP. Now my MP is a Conservative MP, but in a traditional Labour, uh, you know, seat constituency. Thank you very much, Jeremy Corbyn. And I have said before, and I will always give credit where it's due, uh, so I wrote to this MP to ask her what her position on it was. And I got this response. You may not see it very clearly here. I'll read it out to you. It says, thank you for your email. Having Now, this did come out after the government made its decision, but still, it was still interesting. It says, having lobbied the government heavily on this matter, so she's saying she supported the scheme even before the government made its U-turn, um, I am pleased that the government has announced plans to set up a COVID summer food fund to provide food vouchers covering the six-week holiday period. There will be more details to follow and you can find blah, 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 blah. There is no doubt great news, but there is much there is more work to do. I was planning to write to the Secretary of State and Education for Education on this issue. This is why I wrote to head teachers across Scunthorpe yesterday. So this is again before the U-turn was, was decided on. And it would be verifiable that what she's saying, so we'll accept this as fact, expressing my support for free school meals to be extended this summer. Various other things as well. So fair enough. That is where credit is, credit is due. Conservative MPs, as I was saying on Sunday, Monday, sorry, I said it on Sunday, you heard it on Monday. Time is complicated and you'd think I'd know better. I'm a Doctor Who fan. Never mind. Um, the, the point is that Conservative MPs who are living in constituencies where there's a lot of kids going to go hungry if the government didn't get behind this scheme. In Scunthorpe, one in six kids. That, if, never mind the MP's personal point of view on it, that's irrelevant. They are going to lose the next election if they oppose funding food for kids. Starving kids. That is what caused the U-turn. Backbench MP saying to the government, if Labour put forward a motion for this, we will support it. Because if they voted against it, they can kiss their political careers goodbye. They would not win next time round. There's no way they would get to claim to be on the side of their constituents or get to claim that they represent a compassionate party. That was what caused the U-turn. But anyway, um, next little comment that's related to it as well, from a different point of view. So this is someone um, on my side of politics. Now they said, I heard a caller on LBC, which is a radio show, that famously sacked Nigel Farage last week, arguing that poor kids should not be given free meals in the holidays because their parents are bad parents and had too many kids. I wonder if Boris thought that withholding free meals would appeal to his base of right-wing voters who loathe scroungers, layabouts and queue jumpers. Now, yes, um, very possibly there is certainly, and it's a genuine belief, there are a lot of people that you, you look at a comment like this and if you have any notion at all of how life is for, for the poorest in society, uh, you will just see this as a truly heartless comment that people say, well, it just encourages them to have more kids. People genuinely believe it and they genuinely believe it because they've been told it time and time again. And when, you, when you're told a thing consistently over and over again and your experiences never reveal the lie in it, this statement, you will believe it. Or we'd all be subject to the same thing. 
all of us it's just human nature it's just unfortunately how it is these people have never known people in, in true poverty and they've never experienced it themselves which is why actually interestingly the massive amount this is why again the, the government went for the furlough scheme very socialist attitude the government didn't want to do that they had to do it because what they were creating if they didn't and if they allowed mass mass i mean we already might be heading for for much higher unemployment but if they'd have just allowed millions of people to lose their jobs during the coronavirus pandemic and they had not guaranteed wages or even parts of wages then you'd have created a scenario where the middle classes these people ignorant of poverty would have seen it for themselves because they'd have experienced it and they'd have seen just how callous everyone is about it and because they'd think to themselves well it's not my fault i was working and then the whole country shut down they'll see it from the other side that will then dispel this myth um but yeah absolutely boris's natural supporters are of that mindset and by um not funding it he could well have been appealing to them um but just as a, a final little thing so some may know of katie hopkins an extreme right-wing commentator um more successful than i am and she was banging on about this about the bad parents thing so you could only imagine she must consider herself to be an absolutely superb parent should we see how great a parent she is a little photo here's her with her three darling little children don't they look happy with their superb mother of the year look at it and think to yourself i want you to think and seriously I want you to think to yourself, so if you were taking a photo with your kids, now sometimes, yeah, small kids, they're not going to put on their happy camera faces. What would you do? We use digital photographs these days. It's not wasting film or anything. You take another one. You, you keep taking them until you get the one you like. This is the best one she could get. This is it. Look at them. She, it looks like she's dragged them out of a Dickensian workhouse don't think we really need parenting tips from katie hopkins do you but anyway there it is hope you found the video interesting if you did don't forget to click the like button if you'd like to comment on this format and do you think it's something worth doing please do so in the comments below and if you'd like to support the channel further please also click the patreon link for details and until next time i'll see you later